Well, how do you link your DNA to your social networks? Well, believe it or not, somebody's actually done this. It's kind of strange, but true. Jeff Fowler joins us now from San Francisco, where he's with the Wall Street Journal. Jeff, tell us, tell us about this. This is a strange story, but fascinating. Exactly right. We're entering a brave new world where the cost of taking DNA tests, these are the things that you swab the inside of your mouth or you put a little saliva into a cup and they map out your genome, the cost of those tests has come down a lot. So for $100 now, or in some cases maybe $200 or $300, you can take one of these tests, send it off to a company that will then put it in a big database. And once your DNA is in a database, it can also join a social network. And these services like Ancestry.com or 23andMe can then help you find other people you may know or actually you don't know but are related to um, using your DNA. So this is pretty much like Facebook for your DNA. It is um, when you go on Facebook and it says here are some people you may know you might want to be friends with. In these cases, these sites are saying here are some people you may be related to. Well, well uh, I, I love that. You can choose, you can choose your, uh, your friends but you can't choose your family. Um, I understand from your story that what, you interviewed one man who was contacted by somebody else who said, hey, I, I think I'm your brother. That must have been a shock, right? It, yeah, definitely. You know, one of the, the groups that's most interested in these kinds of services, well, so they, a lot of them are being used by people who are interested in genealogy, putting together big family maps, um, but also people who were adopted. Uh, and maybe there are no paper records that exist about who their birth families are. I spoke to one gentleman who went through this experience. He took the test and um, uh, from 23andMe, and uh, a year or so later, he got a message to the system one day saying, hey, I think you're my brother. Um, he ended up finding his birth sister this way, and then eventually finding his birth mother. And she had never told um, her daughter that she had a brother out there. Um, and in his case, it led to a really happy kind of family reunion. Um, but it also raises a lot of questions. Normally those kinds of uh, re-encounters are mediated by people who know what they're doing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, social workers or others, and they give both sides kind of an equal opportunity to back out this, of this kind of encounter. But with DNA science, um, you could find long-lost children or parents or, or find out that a family story about who your grandfather was hasn't been true all these years. So there's a lot of potential there to expose things that um, people might uh, be really surprised by. So to, to, to Jeff, you, you write about corporate America a lot, and this isn't really corporate America. How did you come across a, a, a bizarre story like this and one that's completely fascinating? Well, actually, the biggest player that has just entered this uh, business is Ancestry.com. Uh, they're a listed company. They had 400 million in revenue last year and 1.9 million subscribers. These are people who pay to use their mm. website to put together family trees and do genealogical research. Uh, that's an increasingly popular uh, uh, pastime for a lot of Americans. You know, there's a lot of TV shows dedicated to this. They're getting into the DNA business because they think it can really expand the uh, number of people who are interested in genealogy and the amount of information that people can find out about who they are. So how did this company get started? Because uh, clearly you've got, to you've got to get a database somehow and um, it's, it's like you know the snowball when you, you start it slow, right? Right. So the, the different players in this, in this industry are coming at it from different kinds of directions. So Ancestry.com has this existing large base of people who are really interested in genealogy and have been building out their family trees for years. I spoke with one woman who um, took this test and she already had 20,000 uh, people in her family tree. She'd spent so long building it and so much time researching it. Um, so what Ancestry did when they wanted to, to kick this off is they went to their most hardcore users, to about 10,000 of them, and they said, you know, let's, let's get this going, let's do a beta test and work out the kinks. Now, as of earlier this month, they've opened it up to a wider set of users and they're hoping to build out from there. Um, they won't say how big the database needs to be before it pr starts providing really um, surprising or useful revelations for a wide swath of people. But even with 10,000, you can start to find things. That one woman I mentioned who um, already had been using the site to build her family tree for years discovered she had a second cousin who lived very nearby. And so they've met up and now uh, she realized she has this relative close by.